Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna to be reviewing the Dodge Hornet RT. Before we get into this video, I'm gonna give a huge shout out thank you to the Dodge Ram here in Sandy, Utah for me some time with this Hornet. I'm going to include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And then on a side note, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged 1.3 liter four cylinder paired to a hybrid system and a six speed automatic transmission. The MPGE rating is 77, with the MPG rating being 29 without any sort of hybrid assist whatsoever. And then you can get 33 miles on a single charge. Power outputs with this RT are 288 horsepower and then 383 pound feet of torque, but that is when you do the power shot feature. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, I like the little vents you get here with this RT package. That looks really cool, actually. And then you have the Hornet signature lights down below. You got the Dodge logo there in the center. I like how everything's blacked out. It looks very sporty. And putting it all together, it honestly looks like a Charger SUV. I mean, do you guys, do you guys see what I'm seeing? Now around the side here, our time wheel setup is 225, 55, 18 in the front and over in the rear. And you guys can see here with the wheels all blacked out, got the silver brake caliper. Notice that all the bodywork's painted, so the fender flares are blacked out. Same thing with the bodywork on the side. Got the Hornet badge there. And then you guys can see the mirror cap also blacked out. And here is your full side view with the Hornet. Now take a look at the key fob. You guys can see the lock and unlock function. We got the remote start, the opening for the hatch, and then the Dodge logo on the back. Now popping inside, you guys can see that there's quite a bit of storage space in the back. We got a little 12 volt back here as well. And then you can see the cargo cover built in from the factory. So yeah, pretty dang practical. When you're all done, I'm looking for, where the heck is the button to close it? I mean, there's a button on the key fob, maybe the, oh, it's hydraulic, weird. Anyways, here are the tail lights, as you can see. Got the cool light bar effect, Hornet there. And you guys can see RT on the other side. Parking sensors at the bottom, and I do like the exhaust tips. It looks sporty. So putting it all together, when it comes to style, I mean, this thing looks pretty sweet, if you ask me. Now, take a look at the door panel. You guys can see soft touch down below. I like the stitching that goes through, too. And then you got more of that red stitching, and I like the trim here in the center. I think that's pretty cool, and then nice soft touch on the sides. And then legroom here in the back's good. We got a little storage pocket. Got some vents here in the back as well. And then headroom, it's good. Now take a look at the front door panel. It's soft touch here at the top, and then you can see down below with the trim. All of our window controls, mirror adjustments, mirrors do power fold in, memory seat function, and then we do have blind spot monitoring with the mirrors. Then you got the Dodge logo there on the headrest, and you can see all the trim down the center portion, red stitching on the side. Power adjustments there on the side as well. A little light control. Here, you can see the for the gas cap to open that up. I like the stitching on the dash too, and then soft touch on the dash, and then you get the Alfa Romeo paddle shifters. So taking a look at the steering wheel, pretty cool design, got the Dodge logo in the center, and then you guys can see for the E-Drive modes, and you got practical controls here on the front, including the adaptive cruise control. And then yeah, we got those Alfa Romeo paddle shifters there, because this is the Alfa Dodge Mayo, is what I like to call it. And then with the gauge cluster fully digital, I think it actually looks really sharp. And then you can see you can switch between the e-save hybrid and full electric mode with the car. And then in reverse, we do have a backup camera resolution with it. It's pretty solid. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, uh, newer unit, pretty dang responsive. Wow, that's nice. I uh, noticed he had seats, he had steering wheel, got dual zone climate. So yeah, overall easy to use. I like how he got the little, that's cool with the Hornet. Again with the dash, got the nice soft touch and then at the top as well. And then I like the vents here. Got our dual zone climate controls and then you see our charging area in front, engine stop start and then your sport mode. Got our shifter here for that six speed automatic, volume control here, parking brake, and then it's your ESC off parking sensors and then your cup holders. And look at the center console. Good storage inside. And then yeah, good storage with the glove box too. So this little sticker is blocking the window sticker, but I'm pretty sure the MSRP in this one, because it's just an RT blacktop, is like $45,000-ish, something like that. Anyways, let's see how it drives. Let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's visibility over the hood, both of the mirrors, the thrust of the rear. 
and let us set off in the Alpha Dodge Mayo RT. If you guys want me to do a more loaded up RT, let me know and I can do a review on that because this is kind of more of a base RT with the interior. So yeah, let me know if you guys want to see a loaded up RT. Anyways, I am going to use this video to review this and also talk about or review the future of Dodge. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Things might get a little bit controversial in this video. Might get myself canceled. We'll see. Anyways, turn signal sound. That's pretty cool. And uh, it looks like all the units in this are in... I don't know, so you got miles there, but then it says 15 degrees Celsius. Miles. What the heck? So you have the temperature... <laughs> in centigrade okay anyways other than you know freedom units versus metric units um yeah i think this i think for what this is a small crossover it, it it's pretty dang comfortable the seats are actually pretty comfortable the engine's a little bit noisy i noticed that with these plug-in hybrids it seems like the engines are extra noisy it's kind of an interesting thing Good power. I mean, that's... That's solid. I mean, obviously not full-blown acceleration, but yeah, it's it's solid. Handles well. It's This feels very sporty. Again, this is an Alfa Romeo. At the end of the day, you're going to pop it in sport mode. This is an Alfa Romeo at the end of the day. So, it's going to have a lot of Alfa Romeo-ness about it. Good handling characteristics. Gonna have more of a focus on sportiness rather than comfort and all of that. That turn signal sound, man. Very chunky. Chunky turn signal. Ooh, I like the... Ooh, the lights. Yeah, this thing looks cool! Because again, it's basically an Alfa Romeo, and Alfa Romeo knows how to style cars. Okay, so, we'll get kind of an acceleration. Wow! Transmission's sharp. I mean, it's it's quick to shift. Get a better acceleration up here. This is fun. This is actually a pretty dang fun car. I like it. I like what they've done here. Okay, punch it. Whoa! Yeah, it's pretty quick. Pretty dang quick. So take it out of sport mode. So something things up i actually like the hornet and my opinion is like if you want to save ten thousand dollars <laughs> then buy the hornet instead of the alfa romeo tonali because the hornet rt because you're getting basically the same vehicle a little bit different styling and all that but basically the same vehicle for about ten thousand dollars less so there's my opinion there it's yeah now when it comes to the future of dodge i just don't know if this is going to work to be this is just my genuine thoughts. I don't know if this is going to work. Because the problem is, Dodge thinks that if they do these hybrids and they do electric cars with a lot of horsepower and, you know, that are fast, then, you know, people are, that are Dodge enthusiasts are still going to be drawn to it. And the problem is that people don't like Dodges just because of the speed. They like the muscle aspect. And the muscle aspect came from V8s. So with V8s going away, I just, I don't know. I mean, I think that if Dodge does something with the Hurricane, I think there's some potential there. But at the same time, here's the deal is this, although great performance and everything, ultimately competes more with like a Toyota RAV4 Prime, right? That's that's what this is. And so you look at the buyer that buys a RAV4 Prime and they don't care about half the stuff. They don't care about paddle shifters. They don't care about handling. They don't care about styling. They just care about efficiency. So the problem is Dodge is trying to fit a square peg into a circular hole. The square peg is fast hybrids. It just, it, does, it doesn't work in my opinion. So I think if the way forward for Dodge is, yeah, probably some stuff with that Hurricane, with the Hurricane powertrain. I, th I think that, I think that'll be something, but, you know, maybe work on some sort of super efficient hybrid V8, right? V8, because that's what the brand's all about. I think that is realistically and practically for what the brand has been about, what people love the brand for. I think that's the way forward. Um, let me know your thoughts.